Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to you all to our Saturday conversations. <laughs> Welcome from not so sunny England. It's raining and tomorrow it's supposed to snow. And we are still in a full lockdown. <laughs> so the kids are at home, no school, and it's chaotic madhouse. I'm just speaking until you all join. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Right. So today we have a very special conversation with an even more special guest. The conversation is about, um, about mantra meditation, about japa, chanting. Aajkal ye mantra ya meditation, it's a bit of a buzzword, very um, popular, trending word, meditation. You know, the West is doing it, so... <laughs> It must, it must have something in it. But um, it's, it's, it's difficult to distinguish what is really meditation and then what is mantra meditation. It's, um, it's a bit confusing for many. So today's topic we have Mantra meditation, jap, chanting. What is, what is it? How to do it? What is the benefit? How is it different than silent meditation? What are the benefits of it? Um, and even though we do we do it regularly, you know, we do kirtan, we do japa. Uh, I'm still very excited about this topic because it's a bit of an art. It's a life skill <laughs> that has to be perfected. Uh, to get the full benefit of it, um, it's a skill that has to be really worked on throughout life. <laughs> so I'm very excited to introduce our guest today who can really answer any questions that we might have because he is a very well-versed, uh, knowledgeable, world-renowned speaker uh, on all topics to do with spirituality and specifically bhakti um, because he's studied and uh, really put in the effort to understand our Vedic scriptures. And um, so, so it comes from a place of practicing and preaching. You know, he's a, uh, He's, he's, he's become a medium of giving us wisdom uh, from experience and actual uh, practice. So uh, not only has he learned this from an ancient tradition and, and a guru and a param, par, param par, uh, parik, is that the right word? <laughs> from a parampara system. Um, I always feel that when I hear from someone like this, I can feel very confident that whatever I'm about to hear is going to be very meaningful. It's not just a matter of opinion or thought, or I think like this. I, I feel confident hearing from someone who has studied the scripture because we know it's going to be authentic wisdom. So without further ado, his name is Amarendra Das. He's very, very popular. If you want to hear more from him, you can look him up on YouTube, Facebook. He's got millions of views and uh, not just spiritually accomplished, um, he's also materially uh, holds a double master's from the U.S. in mechanical engineering, is it? <laughs> we'll find out. And um, so it's nice to know that he's, he's a person of the world. <laughs> uh, he's not just doesn't just think like a sadhu or a monk, but he also is amongst is doing our you know daily duties is, is living a normal life so, he, so we can connect with with the wisdom he's about to share so without further ado if you could please join me in welcoming amarendra das amarendra prabhu as we call him um hare krishna <laughs> very warm welcome to you amarendra ji thank you thank you so much for having me we're so excited, especially us as a Jani family, um, whether it's my in-laws or me and my husband or my sister-in-law, somebody's always listening to an Amarindra Prabhu Katha in the house because uh, it's very, you know, we find it very inspiring. And so our special gratitude to you because it's, it's hard in our daily life to have access to this timeless wisdom, but you do it so effortlessly and so uh, full of light and you know, it's lighthearted that we can connect with it. So we are indebted. Um, thank you for your your work in sharing bhakti to everyone. I am I am indebted to the teachers that I was blessed with. I am indebted to the to the spiritual 
preceptors, mentors, gurus that I have learned from. Um, I'm grateful that you're offering your words of uh, appreciation, but mm -hmm. I will I will accept your uh, your kind words, but I will not believe them because I, <laughs> I, I'm, I am not the one. I like to give the example of a conveyor belt in an airport. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that in an airport, people, especially in the baggage claim, they, they stand to get the, the, the baggage. They, they're there uh -huh. to claim their bag. It seems as if the bag's coming from the start of the conveyor belt. But actually, it's yeah. coming from the from the city where it was shipped from. So similarly, <laughs> yep. my my mouth seems to be like a conveyor belt, and bags are coming out in the form of words, but they're not mine. They are being shipped Aww. by the teachers. So, I I pass on all your uh, kind words to them. Wow, that's well. It's your job to be humble about it, but it's our job to praise you and and, and truly appreciate um, the the depth of this gift. So um, without further ado, if we could share with the audience, how did you come to this path of bhakti and appreciating um, the gifts that it has to offer? So basically for me, it was, um, I would say it was a very beautiful ride. I did not have to go through uh, caves and mountains and monasteries and ashrams and one spiritual temple to another. Um, as a family, so basically I was born in 1992. Uh, I'm 29 years old. Um, so we were living in Saudi Arabia as a family um, in 1992 up to 1995. And being an Islamic country, um, my father had a lot of Muslim friends. And during um, the breaks at, at work, they would discuss about what the Quran talks about life and what the Quran talks about, you know, the start of right. this creation and everything. And they, they would look at him and say that, okay, you're a Hindu. What does your Gita talk about? And he had no clue. And in all humility, oh. he tells him that, that I did not have oh. any clue about it. And that kind that of uh, kindled the fire in the heart that, uh, you know, as a Hindu, I must know something at least. Mm. So mm. Uh, yeah, came home, spoke to my mother, and, and that's how the journey began. And in 1995, they joined uh, the Bhakti tradition. And I was three years old. and I started from their lap and yeah. I was very fortunate to get it early in my life. It's amazing because sometimes we have these blocks in our mind about Muslims or Christians and, you know, we, we create these barriers. But in effect, you, your family was inspired by Muslims to take up their faith seriously. So, uh, you know, credit where it's due that if somebody is following their faith and truly trying to understand God and from whatever faith they are, it, it is truly commendable. So. Thanks to those Muslims, you are now. <laughs> in fact, uh, our share. In fact, our neighbors in Saudi Arabia were Haji. Pakistanis, and yeah, uh, and and they were our best friends. They would come home, and uh, and you know they were even now. Actually, sometimes my parents talk about them. That uh, mm. once we moved back to Mumbai, they moved back to Karachi, and uh, and and uh, their first son was my age. So the two sons would grow up together, and it was it was nice. <laughs> wonderful, just to add to that wonderful. Point. Yes, and to to find inspiration anywhere we can to get closer to the yeah. ultimate truth. <laughs> wonderful. So so your parents joined, and then you said you moved back to Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's fascinating. You know, I grew up in a, as you know, Vaishnav family. I grew up in the temple, and yet I know the challenges that are there and following it. Uh, from an authentic place in yourself. You know, it's one thing to be told this is the right path, this is the right thing to do, but it's uh, it's it's something else to really believe in it and follow it for yourself, you know, like, and, and to give it your, your 100%. So what was your own uh, spiritual aspiration as such? Um, and were, were there moments where you had to decide, um, is this real for me? <laughs> Actually, uh, that's that's quite a good question because that's what uh, everyone, all of us go through. Even I went through the same phase, especially during my teens. Um, mm. But uh, but it was interesting. It was uh, uh, it wasn't a prominent phase in my life. It was just a moving phase, and yes. uh, I had a lot of support in the sense that my parents were practicing bhakti at home, uh, and they were teaching me uh, with logic and reasoning and science. And all of this credit goes to Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj, who was actually the guru and teacher 
of my parents and he also happens to be wow. one of the students and disciples of Prabhupada who is the founder of ISKCON so he mm-hmm. came from a, a, a PhD background himself in physical yeah. organic chemistry and he was also a sannyasi so that was interesting so for me as i was growing up i saw bhakti swarup damodar maharaj uh, uh, he you know I, I, of course bhakti swarup damodar maharaj left this world in 2006 when i was 14 but then until then i saw that he was very intelligent it wasn't it wasn't blind mm. faith it wasn't blind mm. faith it was authenticated faith everything that he Thank spoke you. about he would come back to uh, you know so it's interesting bhakti swarup damodar maharaj had termed uh what is called a spiriton just like you have electron and proton and <laughs> neutron <laughs> he had yes. the spiritual spark or the atma the name spiriton yes. and he would He's explain it to scientist right yeah right so my parents yeah. under his guidance were the first uh, pillar of um, science and spiritual synthesis i would say the harmony two things religious harmony was something that they focused on in my childhood and science and spiritual synthesis was something that they focused on so science and spirituality are not two ends they are mm. actually two ends which meet <laughs> exactly so, so that was that was one thing bhakti swarup damodar maharaj was the other my school was uh, certainly a very big boost i would say i i went into not a gurukul not a semi gurukul but it was it was just a normal school in bombay with uh, everything going on you know materialism bollywood cricket uh, talk about it politics everything but one good yeah. thing was they had um, sanskrit in school and they had one hour of prayers every morning so that wow. something that's something that started off uh, with spiritual life and things like that and then reading a lot of science behind spirituality is something that kept me going personally i would say because i i come mm. with a very uh, very uh, rational logical right huh. right <laughs> i i i would in my teenage always think about this fact that maybe is this right is this wrong is this mm. authentic uh, you know am i actually going to see light on the end of the tunnel but right. uh, reasoning with science and logic and rational uh, open mind seeing the scriptures seeing the scientific evidence and especially great scientists who believed in god who gave their perspective in science like for example uh, the the famous uh, atomic physicist uh, uh, niels bohr once very famously said that in it when he was asked what did you see in the atom he said in mm. it i saw the greatness of the creation and the creator wow you know? so i was thinking someone who's gone to the depth the breadth length and depth of science is is someone who's coming out and saying this and and another example that comes to my mind is warner eisenberg another great uh, you know scientist he said initially when we sip from the glass of science we start off with the the thought that god doesn't exist huh. he said as i went on sipping from the glass of science i saw in the bottom of the glass god was waiting for me with open arms <laughs> kya baat hai you know so when wow. i was reading their work i was seeing that here are brainy intelligent research oriented logically provoked uh, you know philosophers and 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 you know world changers and when yes. they come to this consensus or this conclusion so from the scientific world and from the spiritual world i think it it uh, solidified for me wonderful it's never about blind faith i feel like a lot of people think ki ha matlab bhakti ye blind faith ke bare mein hai it's like it's maybe it's for some people it's for emotional people ye thoda kabhi kabhi sunne milta hai lekin that's bilkul galat in in my experience and how you're explaining it um it makes complete sense that actually it's completely scientific and rational and if you're not questioning it along you know at, at each step then you're not really doing it right <laughs> in one sense you know there should be this questioning mind so that so that we can be strong in that faith it's not blind faith and it's not weak faith and i love that um, i love that you had the influence of your parents and um you know guru maharaj like i mean all of these uh, very very uh, powerful uh, personalities who are practicing uh, when when we see that when we see it in practice it um i find that it's so much more relevant uh, right. than just the theoretical knowledge so yeah, both are important the knowledge and having that example within i mean before us to to see how it 
manifest. So wonderful point about that. Okay, so that inspired you on a personal level to take it more seriously. Uh, but yet you got two master's degrees. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, was your faith not strong enough in God? Why did you have to get a master's degree? <laughs> you know, because, well, they say <laughs> well, God gives, we, God, gives every, <laughs> God gives every bird its worm, but necessarily uh -huh. doesn't drop it in the nest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, right. We believe in God, but God helps those who help themselves. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bilkul. Okay, so 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 tell us a little bit more about that. That uh, having you know a foot in both worlds in the sense that uh, it can be quite challenging, you know, to, to our faith and um, and being able to assess that it's not it's not contradictory. It's not mm -hmm. contradictory to be a person of this world to contribute to society to have material aspirations is not actually contradictory to a really deep um, place of faith in God. Um, if you could just maybe expand on that and, and how to maintain that, but of mm. course our vision for supreme truth is the highest goal, but right. many goals are also allowed. <laughs> right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Because we have to live in this world. And uh, if you see like 90% of the people who live in this world are married, they have kids, uh, they have bills to pay, they have to pay for their car. They have to pay loans. They have to, I mean, they have to pay back their loans. Cool. They have so many things, you know, debts. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> Tell us about a lot it. Of, lot of things, a lot of things. Huh. And, and apart from that, uh, desires to fulfill, goals and aspiration, and everyone's in a different direction. So, well, we have to be practical. We have to keep our eyes in the sky, uh, but at the same time, foot on the ground. We can't fly in the sky prematurely. Um, mm. So I, I like to give the example of a bird in a cage. If you think about a bird in a cage, it's important to clean the cage. But what's the point in cleaning the cage if you don't have time to feed the bird? Right. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I, I would say that our material pursuits are like cleaning the cage. And our spiritual pursuits are like feeding the bird. So we need both. We need to uh, mm. feed the bird. But the bird is not going to be happy in a dirty cage. And we're going right. to keep the cage clean. But what's the use of having a clean cage with a dead bird? So feeding the bird <laughs> and cleaning the cage. So feeding the soul and feeding the body. So for the body, we have to work in this world. And for the soul, we need some spiritual practice. And another practical example that we all can relate to is the vehicle and a, and, and a driver of a vehicle. Like the car needs maintenance. The car needs gas or fuel or petrol. The car needs, you know, change of tires. The car needs all of that. But what's the use if we maintain the car and we forget to give uh, roti and sabji to the driver or, or the food uh -huh. to the driver? So both Very are important. Good. Feeding the driver bhi mahatva poorn hai aur gaadi mein bhi maintain karna wo bhi bohat, uska bhi bohat mahatva hai guru toh. So dono, dono paksh mein. हमें ध्यान देना होगा दो दोनों महत्वपूर्ण है हमारे जीवन में सो फीडिंग द द द बर्ड एंड क्लीनिंग द केज एंड फीडिंग द ड्राइवर एंड मेंटेनिंग द कार इट्स सिनोनिमस टू फीडिंग द सोल एंड मेंटेनिंग द बॉडी सो वी नीड बोथ एंड इन इन अ बैलेंस्ड स्टेट ऑफ लाइफ वी कैन से दैट द ट्रेन ऑलवेज मूव्स वेरी वेल ऑन टू पैरेलल ट्रैक्स सो आवर स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस एंड आवर मटेरियल परसूट इफ दे आर पैरेलल टू ईच अदर then the train of bhakti or the train of uh, happy joyous balanced harmonious family life in in the path of bhakti mm -hmm. will go on very very important very so i also like to say that krishna uh, when he appears we all know he appeared on gokulashtami or janmashtami right and similarly radha shrimati radha rani also appeared on an ashtami tithi yes. so ashtami if you see it's exactly in the middle on one side is amavasya which is no moon <laughs> and on the other side is purnima which is full moon ha uh -huh. and krishna appeared exactly on the eighth day to show us mm. the path of balance so mm -hmm. if we, if we are able to feed the soul and feed the body through spiritual and material uh, practices every single day in the right proportion then we will go grow spiritually also in a comfortable material setting so this is what i've always yes. believed in and this is what i have seen right um, so, so I think a lot gets lost in translation because you know 
balance is key. I think in anything, in diet, in practice, everything, even in spirituality, as you were saying. But the the imbalance, meaning weight um, that causes an, uh, a lot of confusion. Um, so if we could just expand on, you said, in, in the correct proportion. Someone else is asking here, what is more important? <laughs> uh, believe in believe in God or believe in science? Is there such a thing as more? We have this idea that balance karenge, it means both of them equally. But you said that proportion is important. Right. So which is more, how to find that balance? How to uh, figure out the proportion? You know, obviously from a spiritual perspective, uh, we're always hearing ki, that is the most important. That is the most important. So in, in a practical sense, how do you proportion that out? So basically, we all work from, let's say, 8 to 6 mm. or 9 to 5. We say 9 to 5, but we end up working from <laughs> 8 to <laughs> and then goes on. All day. Right. So we know our material uh, activities, our, our work, our business, whatever it is, it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. And we have to arm ourselves with sufficient spiritual food and protection before we hit the real world. I like to give the example from the Bhagavatam. We see that all the friends of Krishna, they entered the mouth of Aghasur, the big serpent demon. We all may have heard that story of where Aghasur, sent by Kamsa from Mathura to Brindavan, he was in the shape of a big, humongous, gigantic snake. Mm. And all of Krishna's friends, uh, they got attracted and they said, hey, let's go in. It seems to be like a wonderful cave that we have not experienced before. And some said, do you see there's a red carpet? Uh, <laughs> welcome for us. That's the tongue of Agasa. Uh, there's a red carpet entry for us. Let's go. And they entered. But some one one friend got this doubt. What if we go in and it's a, it's a demon? So they mm. said, why do you worry? The killer of Putana is right behind. So they all looked at Krishna's face. And said, if something happens to us as we go in, you take care of us. And they all went in and they were swallowed by Agasur. But what happened was Krishna did not forget what they did before they entered. Very important point. Before yes. they entered the mouth of Agasur, they looked at Krishna and they said, if something happens to me, you <laughs> With your take permission. <laughs> With your Thakur, permission, we'll do all this. <laughs> absolutely. Thakur, aapke naam. Ham andar ja rahe. प्रवेश कर रहे हैं इस आगासुर के श्री मुख में हम प्रवेश कर रहे हैं यदि हमारे जीवन में कोई आपत्ति विपत्ति आए तो आप संभाले आप सबके रक्षक आप सबके भक्षक आप त्राता हैं तो आप जगत के एकमात्र ईश्वर हैं आप रक्षा करें सो द बॉल वाज इन कृष्णस कोट एस टू व्हाट दे डिड बिफोर दे एंटर द माउथ ऑफ अगासुर एंड एज दे एंटर्ड दे वर एनगल्फ बाय अगासुर एंड देन कृष्ण एंटर्ड रिप्ड हिम ओपन एंड गॉट ऑल द फ्रेंड्स बैक सो व्हाट दैट मींस इज Exactly. Yes. So what it means is our material pursuits, whatever it may be, it's we should consider it's like the mouth of Agasur. Mm. And before we enter into the mouth of Agasur, we should look at Krishna and spend enough time with him to tell him from eight o'clock every morning to six o'clock every evening, I'm going to enter the mouth of Agasur. Oh, and Krishna. high probability, I will faint there in absence of Krishna consciousness and I will forget you. Wow. But my Lord, <laughs> Before I'm going in, I look at your lotus face. You please protect me. Yeah. And if we do that, <laughs> even if we are at our workspace, even when we are traveling, even when we have our own business, we have our passionate, ambitious phone calls with clients and customers. And mm. that that's, won't be the time when we will remember Krishna. So that's like the forgetfulness of, of, of Aghasur setting in. He's bringing in the forgetfulness of Krishna. But mm. if we spend enough time with Krishna before going to work, then Krishna will somehow enter that workspace of Agasur's mouth for us and bring us yeah, out. So wow. to, the, the, the technique or the, the main tip for balance is not waking up at 7.30 and somehow rushing to work at 8. Uh. <laughs> it's starting up at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. So that we have at least from, let's say, 5 to 6.30, of good, solid spiritual practice to digest 10 hours of material work, association, talks, impressions, food, everything matters. The colleagues that we have, the talks that we have, the thoughts that we have, the food that we have there, the parties that we have, the consciousness that we have there. 
to digest all of that we need at least one and a half hours of solid spiritual practice and i think that's where our topic is very important because it brings back mm. to the point of mantra meditation <laughs> kya baat hai kya I, i just want to reiterate that you you know your this this idea of aghasura's mouth it's it's dangerous the the the, the world that we live in these impressions and this is kind of it can be a very dangerous uh, situation we're we're thinking we're enjoying it where the doers were you know success and there's so much uh excitement in the the details of doing but actually it <laughs> it can be quite a dangerous place for the for the spirit and right. uh, i i like that we've, it's been highlighted that it's not through our own endeavors that we can protect ourselves sometimes we think ha i'm spiritually matlab main i'm yoga karun you know i'll do meditation and i'm going to become me you know i'm going to do this but actually what a wonderful example what a profound example that as long as we take shelter we are not the doers our protection cannot come from us it must come from the supreme yeah. person right so wow uh wonderful wonderful so you're saying this practice in the morning an hour and a half you know i don't manage it every day and i just i know that i'm supposed to i know that i'm supposed to but let's let's first start off with what is it what is it because meditation you know it's a buzzword now meditation they're doing it in western schools to improve focus and mindfulness and there's all these uh, western words for it now lekin ye mantra meditation to hamare matlab sanskriti se hi aa rahi hai matlab vedic this is vedic practice of meditation and we are we are the professors we in terms of uh, this timeless wisdom has been has been in our um uh what is this parampara for for millenniums so we should know about it as hindus we should know <laughs> what is meditation what is the best form of meditation what is a mantra and how does it have power um wherever you want to start <laughs> uh so, enlightening us so before i start i just want to uh connect the point that we are about to speak to the point that we just spoke Uh, mm. i i liked how you reiterated the point that we can't protect ourselves we have to depend on him or the higher power to protect us and shripad ramanujacharya from south india gives a very beautiful contrast he gives two examples he calls mm. what is called as a markata pravritti and what is called as a marjara pravritti so mm. markata pravritti is the mentality of a monkey and marjara pravritti is the mentality of a cat or a kitten mm. and he gives a very beautiful analysis which which brings two points together which i'll will i'll i'll come to it in a bit so he mentions about uh, uh, the the monkey uh, the tendency the 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 natural pro- proclivity of of a monkey baby monkey it holds on to the mother the mother mm. doesn't hold on to the baby the baby holds on to the mother mm-hmm. and as the mother is about to jump the mother just signals that i am going to jump now you hold on if you uh-huh. don't hold on you're going to fall so the baby <laughs> like you know holds on to the mother grabs on for dear life uh-huh. absolutely so that's that kind of meditation is called as the markata pravritti where we try to we do our bit to hold on to him hmm but the other way thought is the marjara pravritti that of a cat all that the kitten does <laughs> and the mother cat comes Why? bites him and the picks mother him up. picks up the kitten in the mouth now the, it's the interesting thing Not, that same no. mouth which could be death for the rat becomes the most uh, loving affectionate Shelter. comforting motherly mm. um, protective wow. covering of the of the of the cat and all that the kitten has to do is meow mm. so other That's... practices of meditation are that of a uh markata pravritti where we try to exercise our intelligence and our body and our physique and our cognitive intellect intellectual ability to hold on and to realize the supreme but mantra meditation or mantra jap or sankirtan as they call it the path of kirtan is the marjara pravritti it's that of a kitten where you just call out to him lovingly wow. you call out his names you say that i don't have so much power to understand you i am very small mm. optical illusions in this world confuse me directions <laughs> confuse me 
I forget <laughs> names of people. I see them in front of me. I forget their names and I forget the passcode to my phone and I forget the password <laughs> to my laptop. Bilkul. तो मैं कैसे आपको ढूंढ पाऊंगा आप सर्व सर्व समर्थशाली हैं मैं बहुत छोटा व्यक्ति हूं मैं आपका अंश हूं प्रभु आप विभु हैं मैं अणु हूं जिस प्रकार एक एक छोटी सी मारजार या स्मॉल किटन कॉल्स आउट टू द मदर प्रेम से पुकारती है मुझ में मुझ में कोई योग्यता नहीं सामर्थ्य नहीं मैं अपनी रक्षा कर सकू हे माँ आप करके आप आके कृपया करके रक्षा करें मैं आपको केवल पुकार सकता हूं या पुकार सकती हूं सो दिस इज मंत्र मेडिटेशन द कॉल ऑफ द हार्ट विच कम्स एज आर्टिकुलेटेड वर्ड्स थ्रू द लिप्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ साउंड विथ अटर ह्यूमिलिटी एंड सेइंग आई आई हैव ट्राइड इनफ बट नथिंग इज वर्किंग आउट यू प्लीज पिक मी अप एंड हेल्प मी दिस इज कॉल्ड मंत्र मेडिटेशन वाह क्या बात है क्या बात सो अगेन वी वांट टू रीइटरेट that we could try it on our own hum apne aap kar sakte to some degree to some you know we create the human beings we are creating big big buildings and societies and you know institutions we 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 are small creators but but self realization something uh, to you know to the depths of connecting with the supreme with the divine that is not something small <laughs> mm. and if it has anything to do with god then we have to we have to we have to accept that we need help right and i and i really i really uh, appreciated that point you shared that 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 is actually our power we have that ability to just ask and thoda sa meow bol diya humne aur bhagwan ka kahan se kahan pahunch jayenge hamare liye bilkul main mujhe mujhe yahi lagta hai ki just like a child you know someone who's like let's say 2 3 years old he can mm-hmm. never see this world from a 7 foot height not possible yeah, because he's only so small but if mm. he calls out to his father who's 6 and 1/2 feet or 7 feet tall ha utha lo the father puts him up on his shoulder mm. now the mm. child cannot see that uh, from that height on his own ability but when he depends right. on his father and the father agrees to pick him up now he sees from the same height as the father so right. this is the process of bhakti where we call out to god with humility that um, i i make mistakes i am not perfect my analysis mm-hmm. gets into paralysis <laughs> and uh, i i you know, same our yeah. bhagavad gita starts with the same point arjuna in chapter 1 tries to figure out right surrender yeah many times people say bhagavad gita starts off from the second chapter where bhagavan speaks but why even mm-hmm. include the first chapter because mm. the first chapter is more important than all the rest 17 chapters because yeah. in the first chapter arjuna is trying to figure out he tells mm. krishna sena yor yor madhye ratham sthapaya me achut he achut main rath arud hu wahan beech mein ja kar dono paksh ke beech mein mujhe khada kara dena mujhe dekhna hai mitra paksh kaun sa aur shatru paksh kaun sa i want to see who are my friends and who are my enemies and he is using god or krishna as a means to fulfill his desire but then when his mind starts reeling and the bow starts slipping from his hand and he's perspiring and he's confused he says shishyaste ham shadhimam tvam prapannam oh krishna i can't figure out you help me and the bhagavad gita starts from there so wow. the hunger created to accept the fire of uh, or the sweetness of Bhag- uh, bhagavad gita that that hunger is very important so wow. we on the path of bhakti to say that in uh, like arjuna that Uh, please, please you know please uh, uh, help please help. help and this what a powerful point because uh, someone just asking chet thakkar ji father is within us so humko pukarne ki kya zarurat hai you know absolutely baat theek hai lekin lekin aapne what you just shared is so powerful that even though krishna was with arjuna krishna is saying okay i'm going to help you <laughs> yet arjuna had to had to uh, do all the analysis you know figure it out himself but at the end he said okay now i really i really need you to help me not right. just a physical way you know that that surrender is absolutely key of course god is within us god is everywhere but that doesn't mean that we can just take it for granted like ha theek hai you know kar lenge hamare liye wo no we have to ask we right. must uh, yeah so if, if you wanted to share something sure 
Sure, it's actually a relationship of love and affection. And where there is love and affection, uh, there is also some minute independence. So Krishna does not like to micromanage. Like if we are feeling something in our heart, but if we still feel that, you know, I think I can manage. So Krishna is not interested in intervening because he wants his son to, you know, do what he wants to do. But when the son says, father, I think I tried, but I really need your help. So Krishna mm -hmm. likes to embrace such a child. I, I would like to give an example that uh, uh, a father had, uh, you know, let's say three children. And he, he took them to a, a, a store and got them chocolates. And all of them, they're ripping the, the wrapper of the chocolate and they start eating. And the first is eating, the second is eating. But the third one, he opens up the wrapper of the chocolate and he takes the first piece of the chocolate and asks his father, like, do you want, like, I, I would like to give it to you. Oh. So the father now takes that first piece and uh, puts it in his mouth and he also picks up the child. Now, the father is actually not... Uh, uh, devoid or bereft of chocolates, he can probably yeah. his, he could probably <laughs> put the whole by the shop. Huh. But he was only uh, interested in that affectionate dependence and the loving reciprocation and call that the child has. So similarly, mm -hmm. Krishna in our heart, he can solve all problems, no doubt. But he's waiting for that innocent, sincere dependence that we can have in him. Wow. And we can give the chocolate of our sincerity and he can accept and pick us up in his hands. So although yeah. he's there within us, mm. it, uh, we have to depend on him. It's just like um, uh, play, playing flute. There's enough oxygen inside. <laughs> but by breathing, you don't get the fun that you get by blowing it into the holes of the flute and Raj is coming out. <laughs> yeah, <man>. So, <laughs> so the, this is Jiva Goswami's example. To say that mm. God is inside, so just like oxygen in the lungs, but we don't find that pleasure just by having him within there. But when that breath is used through the flute, ragas are created. So when we, we interact with him through uh, affectionate love or, or bhakti, then the rag comes out. Now, it's very interesting. It's a play of word because yeah. rag in, in, in classical music uh, is a string of different notes put together. But in mm. Sanskrit, the word rag means affection. Or attachment right so when you invest your breath into the flute ragas come out beautiful intoxicating ragas so krishna's there inside but when you invest time and energy into the flute of devotion then the rag or attachment of loving relationship develops and blossoms wow wow that's wonderful because it's you know he says himself i'm neutral he says i'm neutral to everyone so we if you want something more than neutrality, then you've got to put something into it. We want love. We want deep connection with him. So, uh, wow, it's, it makes so much sense that, yes, he is there everywhere. But, but to have a personal, intimate relationship with him, we must call out. We must speak to him. We must treat him like, like a, a real person. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, if we could then move on to actually understanding the power of this mantra meditation. Why can't I just call out? I hear this many times. Okay, okay. You know, Bhagwan hai, main hoon, aur main apne, apne tarike se main unke saath jodna chaungi. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do it my own way. Mujhe ye sab rituals aur ye sab pasand nahi hai. Mujhe kehte hai log. Ye iska kya matlab? Ye mantra mein kya, kya zarurat hai? So, maybe if we, if we could just understand um, the power of a mantra and how it's different to normal meditation? <laughs> so this is quite a loaded question. So I'll probably take it in, uh, in, in Sorry. phase. Uh, yes. Because basically there are three phases in this question. The first is the, before we get to the power of mantra, uh, there's power mm -hmm. of sound in the first place. And then the second, the, the second step would be uh, what is, what is the what is the difference between sound and mantra? What is the definition mm. of the word mantra? And then what is the effect mm. of mantra for me uh, over any other, let's say, silent meditation or or, exactly. or, or meditation uh, according to my own, you know, practice? Yeah. Or fulfillment or like that. So maybe we'll start off with the first step of uh, just the power of sound in general, and then we'll take mm. it. We'll build the discussion ahead. So it's okay. it's interesting that. 
mother nature teaches us so many lessons about sound in itself like we can stand under a tree and just clap our hands and you can see the the birds are really afraid they don't even know who's clapping <laughs> they don't see the person clapping but they just get scared and they start mm. flying out just by the sound wow so so sound is is such an integral part of our existence not just for humans it going down to birds plants mm. there have been mm. research studies documented with effect seen on plants like you can have sensors on the leaves of the plants to see how they respond and you can play uh, classical music indian classical western classical or you can have other kinds of uh, music um, you know yeah. as a contrast or even words there there was one experiment that i remember where a certain scientist he spoke to the first plant that uh, i hate you uh, mm. i don't like you you are yeah. not useful you don't mm. bear fruits and flowers uh, i don't mm. need you and think you know derogatory yeah. uh, defamatory words uh, which are uh, not generally appreciated and not liked and that was spoken to a plant and on the other side another plant in seclusion uh, the scientist went and spoke that you're so beautiful you're so attractive mm. i'm so happy that mm. you're there in my house mm. and the effect was seen that the first plant who was subjected to very harsh rude hate speech you could say withered away in time and the second plant was doing much better so wow. what to speak of sound on birds even plants the famous example of the solomon islands where when when they when the tribes in the solomon islands when they want to um, uproot a tree and they can't do it with proper uh, tools they just hold hands around a tree and swear words at the tree and oh my god and and, and in, within two or three weeks the tree which survived for hundreds of years uh, starts drying up in three weeks which oh is oh my goodness uh, i did not know that <laughs> the power of wow. sound you know even of course famous example of a uh, deer getting attracted to the flute sound of a hunter we find that again and again in the bhagavatam but in real life we do see that when a hunter plays the flute the deer just forgets that it's a deer and this is a human hunter the deer goes close to the hunter and licks his feet and and smells him and goes around in happiness and he puts the flute aside and reality dawns in the in the eyes and the face of the deer that i am a deer and i am not so dear to this human being <laughs> so oh my I, goodness yes he to run away and then the mm. the hunter puts the flute back and the same deer comes back so we can see the power of sound in birds in plants in trees in deer and then what to speak of human beings history has been and uh, you know has given enough proof and evidence talk about uh, all the big uh, uh, dictators talk about stalin talk about mussolini talk about hitler talk about yeah. how they could speak speak and you know bring in a certain consciousness in the people so you could either make or break humans on the basis of sound wow uh, everyone likes to hear sweet words affectionate words and at the same time when we hear some metal crushing sound it sends shivers down our spine so yes. we see that sound is very very integral very very integral mm -hmm. in, in all walks of life whether it's animals it's mm -hmm. insects even mosquitoes or what to speak of others like nowadays we have a different uh, let's say fumes are given out in the room a coil which knocks off the mosquitoes but previously we had a certain vibration which which mm -hmm. would knock off the 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 mosquitoes wow. so insects birds uh, trees <laughs> plants yep. humans everyone it's, it's innate uh, what's that it's innate it's, it's it's within our dna it's about right. the vibration right. is uh, is not something anyone is is free from meaning it it's uh, it's a part of our being our creation our soul yes yes absolutely even even from a spiritual perspective when you see or uh you know let's say from an interreligious perspective uh, the the bible says that in the beginning there was sound mm. and the vedas mm. say that tene brahm hridaya adi kavaye muhyanti yat surayah that krishna uh, he actually played the flute and the flute sound entered the heart of brahmaji in the first verse wow. of the bhagavad 
And even the scientists, I mean, they may not believe in God, but they talk about a big sound, Big Bang. <laughs> <laughs> they get it. It's a little bit delayed, but they get it. In the end, right. they got it. <laughs> right. So wow. sound is certainly very, very, uh, very integral. We can't, nobody here can, can say that uh, we can, um, you know, be independent of the, the effect of sound. Uh, this is why even uh, if you see the, the phones, they have alarm clocks which have increasing sound. When you <laughs> press the snooze button, the sound increases. It's not visual. Um, mm. It's not by touch, but it's by sound. Right. Absolutely. Because if, if someone's sleeping, you stand in front of him, he's not going to wake up. And mm. even, if you, even if you tell him, please wake up, he's probably going to turn on the other side and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but yes. it's the ear which works even when we're asleep. It's the, it permeates it's the much deeper. Right. It's it's the ear which develops first for the child, even in the womb of the mother. Mm. And the sense of hearing is the last thing to leave the body as we die. As the sense is shut, the hearing is still there. Wow. So the first thing to enter and the last thing to leave is the sense of hearing. So if, yeah. uh, if, if normal alarm clocks with material sound can wake us up from material sleep, why mm. can't a special mantra, which is a spiritual sound, wake us up from spiritual sleep? Wow. Okay. Well, on that, on that note, because we could, uh, you know, we could keep going. We could really keep going through and I'm really appreciating this, but that really is just highlighting the difference between silent meditation and mantra meditation. Because I know many people, I'm going to use what you've said in, in response next time, because uh, many, many people say, I prefer silent meditation. I don't meditate about it, but I So maybe to the next point that... Uh, what is the difference? You know, I'm I'm really hearing the difference between the two, if you wanted to. So sound could be anything, right? Sound mm -hmm. uh, absolutely doesn't have a definition. It could be anything, um, absolutely anything. <laughs> but mantra has a very specific meaning. In Sanskrit, um, the words that are used, they have a very specific uh, meaning. Uh, like, like, I'll just give you an example. In, in English, the word for uh, S-O-N, son, is just son, whether he's the first son, whether he's the last son, uh, whether he's someone dear to us, whether he's uh -huh. a good son, bad son, obedient son, I'm responsible son. son. <laughs> he's just son, S-O-N, mm -hmm. right? But in Sanskrit, it's not like that. Uh, there, are, there are different words for the same relation. Uh, mm -hmm. There is sunuhu, sutaha, putraha. Mm -hmm. uh, so different words are there in Sanskrit for the same because they all have different meanings. The son who is dear most to the mother is called as Atmaja because generally children are so children, children are born from the body. But the word mm -hmm. Atma means the soul. So he who's so dear to me that it seems that the others are born through the body, but the son's born through my soul. <laughs> wow. Uh, at, yeah. at, uh, and ja means mm. jan. Mm. And similarly, the word putra, right? We oftentimes say mera putra hai, mera suputra hai. But the mm. word putra has a very specific meaning in Sanskrit. And I'm, I'm linking that to the word mantra. So the word putra means, so uh, the word pum in Sanskrit means hell. Mm. Pum. So even if, the son, even if the father was, let's say, uh, irresponsible or very sinful and you know he was breaking different moral and ethical principles and if he happens to go to you know hell for punishment let's say which is boom that son who is so responsible so spiritual so capable that he can not just protect himself but even protect his father and his ancestors and right. successfully get them back from hell to sound uh, comfortable uh, you know, existence of happiness. That person is called putra because the syllable tra in Sanskrit means trayate, to rescue, to protect. Mm. So this is why Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita he says paritranaya sadhunam, to protect the sadhus I come. Right? So pum 
means hell and tra means protect. So he who can protect the forefathers, the ancestors, even from you know sinful or unhappy conditions to a happy state of life is called putra. Wow. So similarly, the same syllable tra has been used here. Mantra, very simple to understand. Man means mind and tra mm. means trayate, that which rescues, that which protects, that which helps. Our mind has anxiety. It has a lamentation of the past. It has mm. fear of the present. Uh, it has anxiety and, and hankering of the future. So the mind is always in a state of it's I, I often like to say that the mind is like a bird with two wings. Mm. Past and future. Mm. It keeps flapping. <laughs> and past, mm. it's all about he did this to me. She did this to me. I wish I had not done that or I wish mm. I had done that, which I didn't. Mm. So it's all about lamentation. Mm. And in the future, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I hope this happens. But if this doesn't happen, I hope that happens. But if both of them don't happen, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> plan A, plan B, plan C. Mm. So these two wings of the bird called the, uh, the past and the future and the bird of mind, which is always uh, flapping and the mind goes all over the place. Mm. Mantra is that sound, that frequency, that holy spiritual um, sound, which can cut off those wings and make the bird sit in the present in a state of calm, serenity and, and, and peace. Uh, wow. spiritual joy and, and fulfillment and satisfaction to the state of the soul that mm. whatever has happened to see only good in that. Whatever is going to happen is, is only good. I'm sitting on the lap of the Supreme Lord. I don't have to worry. <laughs> wow. He will take it. 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 I 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 will इनको मैं अच्छे से निभाऊंगा और प्रभु के नाम रखते रहूंगा दुनिया के काम करते रहियो राधे श्याम जपते रहियो ऐसे वृंदावन में कहते हैं <laughs> <laughs> तो, तो इस प्रकार दैट अध्यात्मिक दैट स्पिरिचुअल साउंड वो आध्यात्मिक ध्वनि जो प्रभु के नाम से अंकित है जो हमारे मन में जो क्लानी ग्लानी है या जो क्लेश है जो दुख प्रदायक वस्तु है इनका निवारण करती है उन्मूलित करती है उनको पूर्ण रूप से निकाल देती है और मन को सुख पूर्ण प्रसन्नता पूर्ण और आनंद प्रदायक भाव से स्थित रखती है उस ध्वनि को उस शब्द को मंत्र कहते हैं सो देयर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन साउंड व्हिच कुड बी एनीथिंग एंड मंत्र जस्ट लाइक देयर कुड बी अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन एनी सन एंड पुत्र क्या बात है क्या बात है सो जस्ट लाइक देयर कुड बी एनी लाइक देयर इज डिफरेंट वेज टू कॉल आउट टू समवन आई हैव फोर किड्स एंड दे नो जस्ट बाय द वे आई एम सेइंग देयर नेम they know that mummy is in this mood <laughs> so yes. so that's also it's quite powerful that uh you said two things you said we call out we we hum bhagwan ko you know pukarte hain is mantra se ki you are in control now so there's two I, i'm hearing two things one is the mood that we are uttering that sound with and the second thing you've mentioned is the actual difference between the sound vibration of uttered words so either i can call my son putra or i can call him atmaja mm. or it's also the way i can also say putra very lovingly and i can also say atmaja very angrily <laughs> so uh, it seems that both are important um but we'll get to that maybe a bit later i'm digressing but i just love the point about calling out it's it's a prayer it's a prayerful mood um right. especially the mantra that we are talking about in the sense that I heard there used to be mantras where you could bring people alive again. <laughs> Even, uh, that's we're talking about meditative mantras for right. self-realization or self-actualization, -actual something like that. But maybe we can now address the different types of mantras. Sure. What what is the purpose of it? So basically, um, there are different mantras all in Sanskrit calling out to uh, different incarnations and different qualities of of uh, of god they are the different names nama as they call it it's interesting in sanskrit the word for uh, the name of the lord is called nam and mm. it's it's very very interesting it has a very interesting meaning jab hum thakur ke samne jhukte hain usko naman kehte hain kya baat hai na jab hum thakur ke samne jhukte hain tab usko naman kehte hain पर ऐसा एक पथ जब हम पर चलें 
जिसपे ठाकुर झुक जाते हैं भक्त के सामने <laughs> उसको नमन नहीं नाम कहते हैं सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज कॉल्ड नमहा बट बाई द प्रोसेस बाई विच ही गेट्स कंट्रोल्ड बाई एफेक्शन एंड लव इज दैट प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड नाम it's the manifestation wow. of the same thing that makes him bow down to the love and the affection of the devotee so there are different mantras with different meanings and often times mm. uh, i think uh, this is a good platform to even address this point often times people ask this question that why do i have to like chant these names or these mantras why can't i just uh, say something in my mother tongue for example mm. you know or or why can't i just say something you know what i'm feeling inside sure mm. we could definitely do that but uh, there is a very specific uh, research which comes to my mind with respect to the power of mantras over uh, just uh, you know casual feelings or casual articulation mm-hmm. of words uh, so this basically this research was done by a, a, a research scholar and and professor at aims which is uh, all india institute for medical sciences medical science um, especially in the in the department of nmr which is nuclear um so study so basically mm-hmm. where they they have uh, you know uh, study so where they were doing this research uh, of uh, of magnetic uh, resonance and they were seeing the imaging spectrum analysis um so there this uh, professor found a very interesting study in this regard very very interesting and what she did was she brought in 30 volunteers for for this analysis over 9 months of study Mm. basically they were volunteers who were interested you know they were part of this research to know the power of mantras the power of sound just prayers and to basically uh, have a, a, a mr spectrum uh, analysis to see the activity the distribution activity of uh, neurochemical activity basically in the brain so they will mm. analyze the the neurochemical activity in the brain uh, over different uh, specimens those who are chanting a certain mantra and they basically had four classifications of so the first being Achha. someone who was not doing anything and the mm. second was someone who was meditating whatever they wanted so in in mm. bengali they call it as jato mat tatho pat tatho pat jaisi mati waisi gati you know as in say in hindi so um, so that was the second so first was someone who was not practicing anything and the second was someone who was practicing according to his own you know mm-hmm. uh, desire and whatever he wanted to meditate the third was someone who was meditating on the mantra but in its uh, other languages let's say in english or the meaning of the mantra in english or the meaning of the mantra in hindi or marathi Achha. so they were meditating on the meaning of the mantra in contrast to the mantra you see right yes so the first was someone who didn't do at all second was right. someone who wanted to meditate the way they wanted the third mm. was someone who was meditating on the meaning of the mantra in other languages colloquial languages and mm. the fourth was someone who actually meditated and articulated and chanted the mantra and it was a specimen over 30 it was an analysis over 30 um, volunteers uh, and it wasn't just a, a day or two it was over 9 months of practice so they were going through this uh, spectrum analysis mr spectrum you know imaging basically to see mm-hmm. what is the uh, the distribution Uh, analysis of right. uh, neurochemicals in the in the brain so which are found in the neurons so basically you're seeing the neural activity and uh, right. they were trying to map the the left and the right hemisphere of the of the brain so basically mm-hmm. the the frontal side which talks about the the brain thoughts and the activities and they were seeing how it maps with each other is it mm. symmetric is it asymmetric what's the distribution of this neural work like this uh, this right. distribution activity and they were seeing different neurochemicals like uh, creatine and glutamate and so many of them they were analyzing multiple neurochemicals to see how they were functioning and how it was so mm-hmm. when they actually saw this they saw that someone who did not meditate at all uh, it was very erratic the the uh, the distribution patterns that was seen was very very erratic it wasn't something that was balanced uh, the distribution was not symmetric it was asymmetric mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it went on increasing someone who meditated on something systematically for 9 months was little better than someone who didn't meditate at all something mm-hmm. better but not significant mm-hmm. and uh, way more significant was someone uh, who meditated with uh, the meaning Mm-hmm. but the highest spectrum was seen 
the highest uh, distribution balance we could say was seen in someone who meditated on the sanskrit mantras from the scriptures so With this me. was in such a way that the patterns if you see uh, was so symmetrical that the the neurochemical mm. activity of the left brain and the right brain hemisphere the left and right hemisphere was perfectly in sync and that was bringing up a, a, a balanced distribution to to mention that this is someone who's a, a balanced person you know so uh, wow. even even right. professors from aims from the department of uh, nuclear magnetic um, resonance are are speaking mm. about this and publishing articles and papers on this so i think that right. speaks a lot about uh, vocal meditation over silent meditation and even vocal meditation over just other words of you know different languages so this and, is a, wow it's, that's a really profound study i my background is also in biochemistry and i did neural imaging for many years so I, this i'm going to have to look this up this sure. is a very very incredible and especially because i also like sanskrit i'm not very good at it but i like it and it's 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 proving that actually these sanskrit mantras have some different power it's not just the same as saying something in english maybe you know that according to our belief in the vedic uh, wisdom this is coming these sound vibrations are coming directly from the supreme that it's a different vibration like we said earlier every sound has a different vibration and has a different effect on us and um, so this study to me when i'm hearing it i also get encouraged to study sanskrit more and utter the sounds in this native devanagari you know in this the language of of the gods so two things for me that mantra is not just something made up by one of us <laughs> and it has it has a power that we can't truly explain but we can see the effect in the in the in this example you've given right so thank you for that <laughs> and <laughs> what so many, what in fact, in fact this is this is just one of the many research uh, analysis that have been done on mantras and from a scientific mm. perspective it's uh, mm. it's not just in aims in india that this this has been done it's it's done all over mm. the place in harvard medical school in fact in germany a scientist uh, uh, by the name ernst schladny he did a mm. research on on cymatic photography so basically cymatic photography is when sound is mapped to a visual so you give an mm. effect the sound goes through a certain process and then you see the visual of it so that's called a cymatic mm. photography he was a cymatic photographist and 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 mm. a, a, a scientist in that department so what he did was also pretty much Uh, very conclusive he actually inverted a sound speaker you could have a you know a, a sound speaker mm -hmm. he inverted right. that and filled it up with water and he basically played mantras through it and with proper lighting yeah. he saw the effect uh, on the the water of, mm -hmm. you know it's not it's easy said than done but he actually did it over many days and different processes and steps in the process right inverted a sound speaker and filled it up with water and played different mantras through it and with proper light uh, lighting arrangement he took images visual images mm. and they had the most brilliant systematic organized ordered diamond structured uh, surfaces wow. he did many wow. uh, analysis like that he also did like a, a, a keyboard analysis where he he had a keyboard and he had mm. a, a metal plate uh, connected to the keyboard and wow. uh, he had uh, uh, sand granules on the metal plate and then when he played different uh, keys on the keyboard the effect of uh, the sand granules on the metal plate was also uh, you know through cymatic photography was pictured right. so but mm -hmm. he said more than the sand uh, grains the water in the sound speaker was more conclusive and now why i'm mm -hmm. saying that is because our body and our brain both are 80% water Water. so you can imagine <laughs> you can imagine yes. if the effect of mantras on an inverted sound speaker filled with water is so um you know impressive Beautiful. you can imagine yeah. how much effect it brings in uh, on our brain and in general in our body because we are 80% water from a material perspective wow so also also noticing that you've mentioned that there was a lot of symmetry and mm -hmm. balance in both right. the, both the researches it's about balancing our mental activity like by by repeating mantras we're we're 
recalibrating our neural activity. <laughs> We're actually re, re uh, aligning our internal structure. It's not just a mental thing. So it's, I, I find these two <laughs> things very profound that you've shared that it is actually, and you can see it physically, that it's bringing symmetry and balance and you right. know, the sense of, which is key to have any kind of peace. So, absolutely. Wow. Whether, whether through yoga, whether through science, whether through spirituality, uh, whether through Ayurveda, they all come to the same point of mantras and the power of mantras on the body. So mm. whether it's Patanjali Yoga Sutra, whether it's Ayurveda, whether it's Bhagavatam, or whether it's mm. uh, <laughs> owned mm. slightly from Germany, they, they come mm. to consensus on, on that point. Even, even I remember reading another place about uh, the effect of mantras, again, bringing in science and spirituality and yoga and Ayurveda together. It said that our body has different domains and the, mm. the physical structural domain is what we know. Uh, and it, it's it, there's intracommunication through blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. But beyond yeah. that, there is, a, you know, a, a physiological level also, which which we, you know, we know about from from mm. Ayurveda and from yoga as Kapapitta Vayu. And then mm. there is a psychological level inside, uh, another domain of our existence, which talks about Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. And yeah. then there is another level inside, which talk about the Pancha Kosha, which is uh, Annamai Kosha, Manomai Kosha, uh, Pranamai Kosha, Manomai Kosha, Jnanamai Kosha, and Anandamai Kosha. And nice. after that, wow. we have the mind level, mind, intelligence, and ego. So the mantra goes through these layers and works on the, mana, the mind. Wow. So it's interesting that the structural level may be interconnected through blood vessels and the physiological may be connected uh, through Kappa Pitta Vayu and psychological may be connected through Sattva and Tamas. And the mm. Pancha Koshas are also interconnected, but all of them are also interconnected. Mm. So if the innermost layer of the mind is agitated, you can see it affects and brings in uh, let's say an effect to all other domains or all other layers in our existence. But if wow. the mind and the consciousness is peaceful by sound uh, spiritual meditation and, and vibration, then that uh, you know, radiates through, through uh, not just intra, but intercommunication of all the different layers. So the wow. mind which is happy brings in a body which is healthy. <laughs> mm. That's very interesting. So you're saying, you're saying, that mantra can directly affect all these layers that are functioning within us and, yes. and affect the mind directly. And then the mind in turn affects our health and our Absolutely. physical condition. Absolutely. And it, fe it, it seems completely contradictory to how the world is practicing meditation and yoga because generally, when we yoga, we are doing not They're not actually... They're, they're, approaching the physical aspect mm. first and trying to then get to the mind yeah. and it seems it seems almost impossible and actually uh you know we know from 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 this wisdom that it is impossible you cannot truly control the mind by simply doing yoga asans uh, so so more more i'm just hearing that it makes so much more sense to be uttering a mantra while we're meditating to to help the mind as opposed to being at, at the mercy of the mind, which is already uncontrolled. Mm. We're, we're, if we're silently meditating, we are at the mercy of this mind. Right. So, so if we could highlight, if we could just maybe discuss a little bit more about why silent meditation would actually be much harder to do than mantra meditation and how, how mantra meditation truly is. Why is it said that it's the easiest way? It's the simplest way and the most powerful way to meditate. Well, we have spoken enough science, so I would like to move to spiritual <laughs> aspect now. Uh, yeah. Because we have different kinds of audience. So I would like to speak from the Shastra now on, uh, okay. you know, verbal meditation over silent meditation. Uh, in, in, the, in the Shastras, there are many, many references about actually uttering mantra and how that is more powerful than just meditating something in the mind. Very specifically, we find in the Hari Bhakti Vilas, uh, which is a very beautiful compilation of sweet verses on different topics. Um, this, <clears throat> this topic has been addressed. 
and it has been mentioned adhyachit smaranam vishnu bahu ayasane sadhyate oshta spandana matrena kirtanam tu tathovaram the acharya has mentioned that adhyachit smaranam vishnu that you can do smaran of vishnu or meditation in the mind but bahu ayasena sadhyate it fructifies mm. after a long time mm. so someone who's trying to do silent meditation um uh, just just to make another point we we previously said that it is impossible for someone who is just working on the bodily level to come to the mind but i would just say that uh, i wouldn't say it's impossible but i would just say it takes a long long time really mm. long time. because mm. in sanskrit we have the word vishwas right vishwas so v means vishesha rupena in a very special way and shwasa mm. means breathing Right. so it is described that they are interconnected when the breathing is proper the faith in god will rise wow vishwasa vishwasa when the breathing is regulated eventually mm. the faith in god will rise but if the mm. faith in god rises vishwasa then even shwasa becomes vish- vishesha mm. <laughs> you see <laughs> So Achha. in this verse also it is said adhyachit smaranam vishnu bahu ayasena sadhyate that uh, mm. uh, silent meditation or contemplative meditation may succeed but after a long long time but oshta mm. spandana matrena just by moving one's lips and uh, the tongue and vibrating spiritual sound kirtanam tu tato varam it is called kirtanam and it is considered to be way more uh, fruitful way more fruitful wow. in fact in the shastra it is described how fruitful chanting a mantra is over just remembering some you know silent meditation another verse in the naradiya puran that i like to quote here it describes japato hari namani sthane shat guna adhikah atmanam cha punatyuchai japa shrotran punati cha that japato hari namani if someone chants the name of hari sthane shat guna adhika then it is 100 times more powerful than just remembering him in the mind wow so verbal meditation or mantra meditation according to this verse is 100 times more powerful than silent meditation and what is the reason for that is it a, a sectarian fanatical approach no very logical because when there is silent meditation of the mind to the maximum it can purify only the self but when there is horrible uh, audible utterance of a mantra then the person who's chanting and the person who listens to the sound both get uh, spiritually uh, rejuvenated and purified by that by that sound vibration this is why mm. uh, shri chaitanya mahaprabhu said of all the processes param vijayate shri krishna sankirtana krishna sankirtana that the mm. best process to meditate is actually to come together and who in this world doesn't like to sing and dance everybody in fact people pay money to get into a a, a club or a, <laughs> or a pub <laughs> and yeah. you don't even have to pay that you can just come in a spiritual mm. circle and 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 sing and and with musical instruments in a very nice um attractive very soothing calming relaxing rejuvenating manner we can call out to god and that is uh, considered to be way more powerful way more powerful and and before we get on to another point i i want to take one more reference from the scripture mm. this comes from uh, the puranas again by vyasadev and he gives uh, the the his perspective in this in this regard this has also been quoted by shrila sanatan goswami in a book called brihad bhagavata amrita uh, mm. so that's the reference for the verse and vyasadev says मन्यामहे सत्तमं लोलात्मकैकस्वरिधि स्मरात् स्मृते वाची स्वयुक्ते मनसी श्रुतौ यथा दिव्यात्परादप्यवकृच्च आत्मवत सो ही सेज दैट कैन मोर देन साइलेंट मेडिटेशन चैंटिंग इज बेटर एंड व्हाट इज द लॉजिक बिहाइंड इट बिकॉज़ थ्री थिंग्स uh we lost you there oh is everyone else able to hear wow i am thoroughly enjoying this talk has my computer frozen or is his 
Hare Krishna. If anybody could respond, whether it's mine or his. <laughs> okay, so it might have been his computer. Ah, so I'm just going to repeat what I what I've heard from him. <laughs> that 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 there is a way that we can meditate silently. That that is possible, but it will take a long time. It will take, you know, it takes a, a long time to to reach the result. But if we meditate using mantras, it is much more easier. It is. Um, you're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know what happened. It's okay. It's okay. I crashed twice in my last, my, the whole thing crashed. So it happens. You were, you were telling us about that shloka from, yes. From the Puranas. Yes. So there Vyasadev mentions that the three benefits of actually audibly uttering a mantra, he says three organs of the body or three senses are absorbed. And he very beautifully puts it in Sanskrit. He says, Vachi Swayukte Manasi Shrutautatha. He says, Vachi, the tongue gets absorbed. Shrutau, the ears get absorbed. Swayukte Manasi Tatha. And also the mind is absorbed. But in silent wow. meditation, only the mind is absorbed. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's so beautiful. I mean, I, I, that. Even you're saying that you can silently meditate, but doesn't that take like years of practice? Because most of the time, if I try to, if I try to sit silently and meditate, I find it, I find it quite difficult because I just, there's so much going on. I've got so many lists and so many children and so, it's just so much chaos. So, so not only would it take longer for the result to bear fruit, but it also takes longer for me to get in the zone. But as soon as I start uttering a mantra, like, you know, uttering a name of Krishna immediately, I'm able to connect with what I'm saying. So right. it makes sense to me what you're saying. Right. Also so, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that to meditate, the most important thing is shuchau deshe. One should sit in a clean mm. place. Now mm. clean doesn't just mean physically clean, in a pure place. So mm. where do we go for a pure place? Where do we go for a place without agitation? Our phones are constantly ringing and the doorbells are ringing and the pop-ups and the mm. notifications are coming. Mm. And we get distracted by a, an advertisement to the site. Yes. So, so that's uh, so quality and quantity needed to get there. But mantra, very quickly. It can bear fruit very quickly. Okay. Okay. And you said it engages because it's engaging the, the tongue, the ears and the mind. And obviously the biggest distraction are, are those senses. It's, right. it's the, it, that those are the most difficult to tame while we're even doing silent meditation. So I also, I can, you know, I can really connect with that because if your mind is, uh, if your tongue is busy and your ears are busy, it's just two less things to worry about for the mind. <laughs> uh, so uh, very, very powerful. Uh, Moving on slightly, if you don't mind, because we have kind of gone an hour and 20 minutes when we haven't taken any questions yet, but uh, we're totally thrilled to be here as long as you can, you can spare. What is then, how do we know the different types of mantras? How do we gauge, you know, there's different, we're, we're talking about chanting God's names. You know, when we talk about connecting in this sense, meditation, uh, we generally speak of okay, we're going to utter a mantra that will connect me with the Supreme Person. How do we know what is a good mantra? How do we know one is better than the other? Do they all yield similar things? Can I just chant God, 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 God? Or can I, uh, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> right, right. So basically <clears throat> to answer any, uh, any question, we must look to the scriptures. We have to go through the mm. wisdom texts of, of the Eastern mm. philosophy. Uh, to see what uh, what the Bhagavad Gita or the Bhagavatam or what do the Vedas talk about? Because that's the root. And if we don't follow the scriptures, then the Bhagavad Gita actually says, Yaha Shastra Vidhim Utsrojya Varatate Kama Karataha Nasa Siddhim Avapnoti Na Sukham Na Paramgatim The Bhagavad Gita mentions that Yaha Shastra Vidhim Utsrojya If someone takes a path against the scripture, then vartate kama karataha, he gets lost. Mm. Such a person gets lost. 
and nasa siddhim avapnoti he doesn't get any perfection and what to speak of sukham and what to speak of param gatim or happiness and the highest destination and it's interesting krishna mentions the word na three times hmm for emphasis na sa siddhim avapnoti na sukham na param gatim he could have just said na once and then included all of that <laughs> but right. krishna krishna is very clear about what he speaks and this is bhagavad gita straight from the lord's mouth as in english this mm. is straight from the horse mouth we say straight <laughs> straight from the lord's mouth right so so what right. does the scripture say with this regard like mm. uh, what to chant in the specific age of kali yuga where there's quarrel and hypocrisy there's so much confusion there is agitation irritation provocation there's so many things happening um mm. stress and anxiety and we being tossed in the kurukshetra battle every single day so what's what's the way what is the scripture mm. talk in this regard so there are many references in shastra which talk about uh, what to chant in this this age very specifically the the kali santarana upanishad which is one of the upanishads with the name kali again kali santarana that is an upanishad which is mentioned for those in kali yuga to cross over problems and in the kali santarana upanishad it has been mentioned hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare iti shodashakam nam nam kali kalmashanashanam natap parataropaya sarva vedeshu drishyate so the same question that we are asking each other narad muni as brahma ji right. in the kali santara no upanishad and brahma ji is the best person there because he has four heads so he can parallelly study four scriptures at the same time <laughs> right <laughs> he has four mouths he has four heads uh, four brains to process you know he he can study the four vedas so mm. brahma ji answers narad muni by saying he chants the hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram mm. ram ram hare hare mm. and then he says iti which means this shodashakam mm. nam nam shodashaka in sanskrit shodasha means 16 shodashakam nam nam these this mantra of 16 names kali kalmasha nashanam it will destroy all the kalmash kali ka jo bhi kalmash hai uska mm. vinash hoga अवश्य नाश नष्ट विनष्ट हो जाएंगे सब उन्मूलित हो जाएंगे एंड नातह परतर उपाय इससे बढ़कर दूसरा कोई उपाय है नहीं देर इज नात परतर उपाय देर इज नथिंग इक्वल और ग्रेटर देन दिस हु श्री ब्रह्मो वाच एंड देन ही एट्स अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल फ्रेज एट दी एंड विच सील्स इट अप सर्व वेदेश दृश्य थे मैंने सब वेद पढ़ लिए देख लिए परख लिए और इससे सरल मार्ग इससे सरल कोई मंत्र उच्चारण के हिसाब से देखें या अर्थ के हिसाब से देखें या योग्यता अयोग्यता पात्रता अपात्रता स्थान अस्थान के हिसाब से देखें सर्व वेदेश दृश्य थे आई हैव एन सीन ब्रह्म स्टेलिंग नारद मुनि आई हैव एन सीन एनीथिंग विच इवन कम्स क्लोज टू दिस सो बेसिकली द नेम्स ऑफ हरी टू सील इट अपिंग ऑफ द हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र विच हैज थ्री फंडामेंटल नेम्स हरी Uh, krishna and rama rama yeah. or yeah. you know placed in a very wonderful scientifically logical orderly fashion um eight names for hare or hari and four for krishna and four for ram <laughs> wow so very wonderfully arranged these 16 words also uh, another science behind it is we basically have uh, 16 layers for the soul <laughs> we have 16 layers which cover the soul we have yeah. the five uh, uh, working senses they are called very mm -hmm. famously in hindi or sanskrit as the karmendriyas and the mm -hmm. karmendriyas are basically the hands the legs uh, the voice and the private parts so that's five and then there is gyanendriyas or knowledge acquiring senses and which are again five the eyes the nose mm -hmm. uh, the sense of uh, you know taste and then ears and sense of touch so 5 plus 5 10 and the raja on the top the king on top is the mind levin mm. and then the body is pancha mahabhutas earth water fire air ether so mm. the soul is covered by these 16 layers according to the kali santarana upanishad and brahma ji mm. tells narad muni these 16 words actually mm -hmm. pierce through all these 16 layers 
and give wow. the soul what the soul actually wants, which is love for God. Prem, Krishna Prem. Kya baat hai. Wow. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. 16 <laughs> layers need 16 names to pierce through it. Enchanted in a in a specific way, in a specific mantra. I can't just chant Krishna, 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 Krishna. Or, I mean, I could, but I'm, I'm assuming that this this repetition in a very particular way is there for a reason. And as you were saying, that it is it is specifically given for our age, this age of Kali, where we are quite uh, dull with our intelligence. We're limited with our understanding. We're constantly feeling agitated and confused and lost and hopeless. And uh, I love that you said that Lord Brahma said, you know what, all the Kalmasha, <laughs> Whatever ayogita you have, you, you know, we're not, we're not really capable of going too deep and focusing for too long. It's almost like, don't worry about it. We've, <laughs> we've empowered it enough that it will, it will overcome all of our limitations. Right. So, I, I, also, want to, I also want to include all our listeners to the fact that mm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Nam Nam Akari Bahuda Nija Sarva Shakti. So mm. all the names of the Supreme Lord, they have the same mm. power. They, they have mm. the, the same potency to give us liberation. So if someone mm. wants to chant Krishna, 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 he will definitely be purified. There is no doubt about yes. it. If someone chants Rama, 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 or the names of Hari, or Vishnu, mm. or Radha, mm. or whatever, you know, different sampradayas, mm. they have uh, different ways to approach the Supreme Lord. Like, for example, one yes, sampradaya yeah. would have Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, perfectly fine. Another would mm. have Om Namo Narayanaya, perfectly fine. Someone mm. would have Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram, perfectly fine. The Varkari mm. Sampradaya in Maharashtra may have Ram Krishna Hari Bolo Ram Krishna Hari Jai Ram Krishna Hari, perfectly fine. Wow. Maybe some other sampradaya may have. Uh, um, you know. Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama. Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama, exactly. Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama. Another Sampradaya mm. may have Radhe Krishna, Radhe Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Radhe mm. Radhe, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Sham Sham, Radhe Radhe. Mm. Or another Sampradaya may have, um, you know, the Radha Vallabhi Sampradaya may have Radha Vallabh, Radha Vallabh, or Radha Vallabh Shri mm -hmm. Hari. Sure. They may have Radha Naam. Yeah. Or, yes. So different Sampradayas have names of Vishnu Tattva again. This is the main thing. Mm. Worshipping Sita Ram or Radha Krishna or Lakshmi Narayan. This is of paramount importance. So uh, mm. I, I just want to say that, yes, the mantra for Kali, Kali Yuga given in the Kali Santarana Upanishad is the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But that doesn't mean someone chanting the names of Ramachandra is not going to get anything. No. no. <laughs> there are scriptural references for the glories of Ram mm. Nam, Krishna Nam, Hari Nam. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so definitely, but there is definitely a meaning behind the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and why I stress that first. So, so I just wanted to make that point because we may have listeners from different sampradayas mm -hmm. or from different of backgrounds. Course. And I offer of my course. obeisance to each one of them uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with heart full of gratitude and, and affection from my side. So, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so if, if there are, you know, if all the names of God are so powerful krishna so powerful then then how to build the faith in this one particular mantra you know then how to move forward how to understand that this one is the one for this age like how how to act on it hmm. so you mean why this mantra is specified so much yes right. so basically uh, this mantra is chanted by Srimati radharani in goloka brindavan Radharani mm -hmm. calls out to the Hare Krishna Mahamantra when she is in separation from Krishna. So yeah. this is very, very interesting that Radharani in Nitya Golok Dham, when she is in separation, Jab Srimati Radharani Krishna se vipralambh ya viraha bhav ka anubhav karti hai, to Golok Vrindavan mein, Golok Dham mein, Nitya Vaikunt Dham mein, Radharani in Sola Shabdon mein aur battis aksharo mein badh ye jo Hare Krishna Mahamantra hai inka ucharan karti hai apne Shri Mukse. So what that means wow. for our English audience is that Radharani in Goloka Brindavan is chanting this mantra with 16 words and 32 syllables. And the interesting thing is she calls out to Krishna in separation when she is feeling that mood of, of separation mm. from Krishna. Now what happens in Kali Yuga is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
who is uh, a combined incarnation of Radha and Krishna. It's Krishna coming in the mood of Radha Rani. Yeah. Radha Rani is still busy chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare in Golok Vrindavan. And as we know, mm -hmm. all habits die hard. <laughs> so when Radharani comes in the heart of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that practice mm -hmm. of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra in Golok is still there. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it is described Sri Chaitanya Mukhod Girnam Hare Krishna Iti Varanakam Majjayanto Jagat Premi. It has been described that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when the volcano of Krishna Premi in his heart was erupting, erupting, and it <laughs> finally exploded from his mouth. It came as wow. these 16 words because wow. Radharani chants and Krishna takes that heart and comes as Chaitanya. So then now Krishna is also as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And because Sri <laughs> Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the followers in the Gaudiya Parampara take that mood and we also chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra because it comes from the lips of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Wow. It's been infused multiple fold. It's not right. just a... Yes, it's not just power on its own. It's actually been infused with, with love again and again by the Supreme. Okay, okay. So then why do I have such a hard time chanting all my rounds, Prabhu? Why, why can't I do it with full sincerity? And, you know, why do I make excuses? Why, if it's such an easy way to achieve this deep sense of connection and love and perfection of our being, why does it seem so difficult to do it? At times, even though it's the easiest form of meditation, we still find excuses. <laughs> mm. What are the pitfalls? So basically, um, when when a when a master has a servant for a long, long time, and the servant says, "I am going to leave your service, and I have found another master," the master will try to bribe that servant and say, "No, no, I can't be without you. Please, be don't leave me." Kaun karega? Then the boss somehow he tries to bribes and gets the servant back in track. And once he gets, mm. then he starts uh, chastising the servant because he knows the servant is not going to leave. Next time again, the servant says, I have to go. The servant will, you know, flatter mm. him and butter him and say, please be there. Why am I mm. saying this to this question? is because we have been serving a boss called as the mind for a long, 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 long time. Mm. So many lifetimes. And mm. now when we say, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Mind, uh, Hindi mein Mani Ram kehte hai, man ko. Uh, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mani Ram ji, Mr. Mind, yes. I have to give up your service because I have found another master, which is Krishna. Mm. So what does the mind do? Oh, oh, please, please don't, please, please. Be with me, please be with me. And the, the boss or the mind starts getting restless. This is why we mm. see anytime when we are in sync or accordance with the mind, there's no problem. Never mm. does anyone have a problem surfing the internet. <laughs> Never does anyone have a problem. Prabhu, I have a problem gossiping. I just can't gossip. No one has that problem. <laughs> Right? <laughs> we love to find faults. We love to gossip. We love so to easy. It's easy because the mind is, you know, like a king naturally, like enjoying the, the spot. And we are in correspondence and accordance and surrender to the mind. But yes. now when we start chanting Hare Krishna, uh -huh. well, the mind dozes off. When we are hearing Bhagavatam or Hari Katha, the mind dozes off. Whenever the mind feels that I am going to lose this servant to Krishna, I am going to lose this jiva to Krishna then the mind will start getting restless. And then mm. we, because of our eternal uh, subordination under the mind, we give in to the mind and go to sleep or get distracted or give in to laziness or procrastination and all of these things. So it's a struggle. Mm. But uh, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Uh, mm. Everything is difficult, right? In life, everything is difficult. When we have to, yes. uh, let's say if we have an interview at four o'clock in the morning for getting into Google or Facebook or Apple or one of these companies <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning, is there anyone who's going to sleep over <laughs> at four o'clock? No. He'll be up. He'll right. be like checking his internet and light and, and, and his clothing <laughs> and, and the answers yeah. to the questions at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. So when it's an interview, we can wake up. 
when uh, a 10th grader, 12th grader has to give an exam, he wakes up at four o'clock and he studies. And a businessman, if he's told, you come to the airport, I'll give you a bag full of $1 million cash at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I bet he'll be there at 3.30 because he doesn't <laughs> want to miss the man. Yeah. <laughs> but we can wake up for an interview. We can wake up for an exam. We can wake up for uh, exchanging the briefcase. But we sleep in the morning when it comes to chanting. Why? Because we don't have appreciation and value for the holy name. We don't have appreciation. We have appreciation for the degree. If I pass through the exam, the degree. If I pass through the interview, the job. If I get the $1 million, so we have appreciation for the money. We have appreciation for the job. We have appreciation for the degree, the graduate uh, you know, diploma or degree, whatever mm -hmm. we are pursuing. So we see some value there. And therefore, we are ready to sacrifice our sleep and get up and invest time. But we don't see any value in the name of the Lord. And this is why we don't feel like doing it. We don't have taste. We procrastinate. We feel lazy. We feel sleepy. And it's going to be tomorrow. So two things, basically. The mind doesn't let us because of his dominance over us. And second, we don't want to because we don't find any value in the holy name. So therefore, wow. if we want to, we have to try to bring in some discipline to the mind. And at mm -hmm. the same time, by reading and hearing more about the glories of the holy name of God, the appreciation for this jewel, this touchstone of Nama Chintamani will come in the heart. Then it will be easy. Wow. We're completely out of time, but I just can't bring myself to asking any final questions because <laughs> I'm enjoying it more than anyone else. <laughs> but I must touch on the, the topic, which was chant and be happy. Mm. Chant and be happy. Um, you know, if we were truly feeling the joy, I, I do feel happy. When I'm chanting, I genuinely feel, you know, happiness. When we do kirtan and the children can even feel it. Then then um, why does the mind still win when it comes to doing this uh, meditative hour and a half block? Why does it still, or why does the happiness run out? What are the pitfalls? How, how, how come it's not a lasting sense of urgency and happiness? Uh, and also we didn't touch upon how it brings us happiness in case you wanted to also connect the joy of mantra chanting. Sure, sure. So <clears throat> it's like uh, when you want to heat something, uh, if you put mm -hmm. it in a microwave oven for five seconds and take it out and keep it out for 10 seconds and put it back in the microwave oven for five seconds <laughs> and take it out for 10 seconds, again, put it on for five seconds, it's never going to get hot. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the food is useless. That doesn't mean the microwave is useless. <laughs> it just means we are not applying the process properly. Mm -hmm. So by, mm. by we not experiencing happiness immediately, it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we are useless, therefore it's not working. And it's not mm. that the mantra is useless, therefore it's not working. The mantra is perfect. We are trying to be sincere, but maybe we are not applying it the right way. Everything has mm. a right process to apply. Everything has a mm. right process. So the process for chanting the mantra is in focus. We can't multitask at that time. Uh, mm. You know, if you're chanting the mantra and looking at the phone, looking outside, talking to people, what's happening is that gives the mind an outlet to move around, to mm. talk, to be absorbed in the conversation, to browse the phone, to look outside the window, to um, <laughs> do so many things, <laughs> to mm -hmm. sleep and lay down and chant. <laughs> so when we do these multiple things, the mind is not getting the heat that is needed, like in the example of the microwave oven. You're taking it out and it's not getting hot. So the best mm. way to do it is, is focus. To close our eyes, sit in one place and repeat the mantra. And now it, this is going to be very difficult because the mind will give excuses. My back is hurting. My legs are hurting. Okay, find a comfortable spot up on the chair. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But don't move. Just stay there like a statue. Sit there. Sit there for 10 minutes. Start off with 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Build the stamina. 15, mm. 20, 30, 40, 50, one hour, two hours. It's, it's like we are sitting on the ocean, uh, the mm. shore of a sea. And we're mm. sitting there for five minutes and we're saying, 
the waves are not coming and we leave and the waves come and then when the when we come back the waves leave so similarly mm -hmm. so the, if the person sits there on the shore for like one hour he can see that the water will definitely come and touch his feet mm. but what we're doing is sitting there for five minutes and leaving so then it's not right. getting the time to warm up the food of our of our consciousness mm. so to speak but if we sit there building our stamina let's say we start with 10 minutes 15 minutes but we have to sit there we have to bhakti mm -hmm. vinod thakur in harinam chintamani explains that getting success in chanting is a colossal struggle <laughs> but what is interesting We're in good to company note, <laughs> yes but what yeah. is interesting to note it's easier to struggle in chanting japa than to struggle in another mother's womb again wow Kya if we don't hai? if we don't chant the holy names and we don't get liberated and our consciousness doesn't get cleansed then we have to get into another mother's womb and punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam iha sansare bahudustare kripaya apare pahi murare bhaja govindam bhaja govindam govindam bhaja mudhamate adi shankaracharya says mudhamati someone who's distracted bhaja govind he says three times govind ka bhajan karo govind ka bhajan karo govind ka bhajan karo हे मूडमती हे विक्षेपित मती डिस्ट्रैक्टेड एजिटेटेड माइंड भजन करो भगवान का नाम रटो डोंट गेट इन टू अदर थिंग्स सो इट्स अ स्ट्रगल बट टिल अ सर्टेन पॉइंट आफ्टर दैट इट्स ओनली प्लेजर इट्स लाइक साइक्लिंग ऑन टॉप ऑफ अ माउंटेन वी हैव टू कीप पेडलिंग वी हैव टू कीप पेडलिंग एंड इट्स स्ट्रगल इफ यू लीव इल फॉल सो कीप स्ट्रगल कीप इट गोइंग कीप पेडलिंग but once we come to the point of the peak and then when we hit the other side of the mountain even if you don't pedal you'll come down by the slope mm -hmm. so chanting is is like a projectile there's little struggle like anything for that matter learning classical music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it uh, pandit bhimsen joshi in one again bharat ratna pandit bhimsen joshi mm -hmm. in one interview indian classical vocalist said it takes uh, seven lifetimes to perfect classical music <laughs> so 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 perfecting anything in life playing sitar playing uh, and it's mm. you know computer mm. programming anything for that matter takes some hard work but after a certain point you love doing it right mm -hmm. so chanting is like that it may take some time to 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 get into that but it's just lack of discipline so we need two mm -hmm. things every single day if you mm -hmm. do it like one day and don't do it for 10 days it's not going to work no every day and that too mm -hmm. the right quantity not just 2 minutes every day mm -mm. for a medicine to work two things are important the dosage and the frequency the mm -hmm. dosage could be let's say three times a day uh, mm -hmm. the dosage could be three tablets and mm -hmm. the frequency could be three times a day so if right. you take one tablet three times or three tablets one time not going to work it's going to mm -hmm. be three tablets three times so minimum mm -hmm. let's say 10 minutes 15 20 30 1 hour 2 hours to start with as the as the dosage and frequency mm -hmm. every day and when we do that just for 6 months try it for 6 months if you don't have success leave it off mm try it yeah. there's nothing wrong in trying paisa waisa to kuch jaane nahi wala you're not going to lose any money try it for 6 months sincerely if it doesn't work chhod do बिल्कुल बट आई एम सेइंग कॉन्फिडेंस दैट आप छोड़ नहीं पाएंगे क्योंकि इसमें क्यों क्योंकि इसमें रस है और ये रस क्या रस है ये जब जब करते हैं सो आई विल गेट बैक टू इंग्लिश फॉर आवर इंग्लिश ऑडियंस व्हेन वी व्हेन वी चैंट द होली नेम व्हाट एक्चुअली हैपेंस इज दिस इज दिस इज सर्टेनली वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग नाउ अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू गेट लिटिल फिलोसोफिकल बट इट्स इट्स वेरी फैसिनेटिंग <laughs> um when we talk about uh, again patanjali yoga sutras and ayurveda and 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 different uh, layers in our body our consciousness basically has impressions different kinds mm. of impressions when we do a good activity in sattva gun it has a sattvic imprint usko sanskrit mein samskar kehte hain that's the term for an impression in sanskrit it's called a samskar so when you do something in the mode of goodness it brings in a uh, let's say a white spot in the consciousness when you do something in the mode of rajas or passion it brings in a red spot and when you do something in tamas uh, 
evil activities, let's say it's a black spot. So our consciousness at this point is filled with white, red and black spots throughout. Mm -hmm. And they stop us. These impressions stop us from actually being happy and touching and tapping into the Ananda Mayabhyasat uh, nature of the soul to be happy. So what the mantra meditation does is it cleanses the samskar impressions. Mm -hmm. It takes off mm -hmm. by bringing in spiritual impressions. And when the spiritual impressions are got in, the mirror of this consciousness is taken out. The, the dust on the mirror is taken out. Just like we yeah. see in our homes when we have a mirror and if it's filled with dust, you can see ourselves. And then we can even probably end up throwing the mirror out in the trash saying it's useless. What's the use of this mm. mirror? <laughs> but it's useful. We just have to wipe, you know, like go like this and do this. <laughs> Oops, what did yeah. I do? <laughs> oh, yeah, it got practically <laughs> proven. So, yeah. so similarly, our chitta, our consciousness, uh, it has all these impressions. Sat Sattva samskar, rajasik samskar and tamasik. Sattvic, rajasik and tamasik samskars or impressions. Red uh, you know, white and black spots just for our graphical analysis. But when mm -hmm. we chant, then it brings in the golden spots. And that mm -hmm. overrides and cleans off all the white, red and black spots. And that helps us tap the happiness of the soul. Just like the when the, the dust on the mirror is taken off, we can actually see ourselves in the mirror. And now we see, mm -hmm. oh, it's wonderful. I feel happy and I can comb my hair and you know, make sure that the color is right and sit properly and adjust everything by that mirror, which I was going to trash in the, in the in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that same holy name, uh, which I think is some ordinary sound, can actually invoke true love, can bring our original form, spiritual identity as the servant of God alive by first clearing off these samskars. And in the presence of these samskars, it doesn't let us taste the, the nectar of the holy name. But for that, we have to continue. Keep chanting, get more and more golden spots, let them replace the white, red, and black spots, and then the happiness will come. There is some investment in every business before you can reap the profit. profit investors Many times they say that. Once you invest, don't talk about profit for the first five years. Mm -hmm. So even in the material realm, there's some investment. There's some input in the beginning. And then there's only fruits to, to bear. Even for a farmer, we see. Even for a gardener, we see. He pushes in the seed. He doesn't get the mango fruit immediately. He has to cultivate every single day. Keep away the weeds. Mm -hmm. Which in our case would be distraction and procrastination, laziness, um, mm -hmm. inattentiveness. Those are the weeds. We keep all of that away. And then we put the okay. fencing so that the offenses are taken care of. The, we don't commit the offenses. And then the seed of Nam will give the fruit of Ananda. But it takes time. It's, it's definitely a, a powerful process. People in the past who have done it have got it. People mm -hmm. in the present who are doing it are getting it. Shastra says if you do it, you'll get it. So therefore, why not try it? If you don't get it, fine. But try for six months. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Okay. We're, we're going to just touch on the last topic because I don't know if you've noticed, but it's almost coming up to two hours <laughs> that people have been listening. We've got almost 700 people watching with us for two hours. So I thank, I thank you all for being so patient. <laughs> But this is a real testament to Amrinder Prabhu's speaking abilities. Um, you know, so if you are, if you want to hear more, he's got wonderful lectures regularly on YouTube and Facebook um, on your official website. But just for closing, just for closing conclusions, um, you know, you're saying it's going to make me happy. What proof do you have that it's going to make me happy? <laughs> like uh, because you know, even enjoying my life, I am. I think I'm happy. You know, I can just do what I continue to do. Why should I believe you when you say that it will give me real happiness? How, how do I know that? And how do you know that? <laughs> well, just being the devil's advocate here. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So <clears throat> whatever we are doing in life, 
we can definitely be happy. There is no doubt about it. But uh, the question is for how long? Mm. For how long? Today, I'm happy with the house that I live in. But uh, it's possible that tomorrow I have to give up that house. That same house which gives me happiness will give me terrible pain and distress when it's taken away. So the mm. nature of things in this world is mm. not happiness, but mm. is just future suffering. Krishna says mm. in the Bhagavad Gita, Yehi samsparsha cha bhoga dukha yo naya evate adhyanta vanta kaunteya nate shuramate buddha. Krishna says that every enjoyment in this world is brilliant when we get it. Brilliant, no mm. doubt about it. It's brilliant when you get it. Everyone likes mm. to have like vehicles and good, uh, beautiful wife and nice children and a good job and money and a mm -hmm. brilliant house. Absolutely, yes. I'm not denying that. But Krishna says, it's good to get it. It's a pain to maintain it. And mm. ultimately, it's it's disappointing and distressful when it's taken away. Arthanam arjane dukkham, arjitanam cha rakshane, aye dukkham, vaye dukkham, dik arthan kashta shanshritan. In Sanskrit, it has been mentioned that arthanam arjane dukkham, to earn money is painful. It's stressful. Mm. And arjitanam cha rakshane, once you, mm. first of all, to earn money is stressful. Once after earning money to preserve it is stressful. Uh, mm. And if it is preserved properly, then why it's not multiplying is a stress. <laughs> and if it is stolen away, then also it is a stress. But the illusion is, unfortunately, that money will keep me happy. Right. Wow. So it may bring in some temporary flickering uh, sukha. In, in Sanskrit, there are two words. One is sukha and second is ananda. Mm. It can give sukha, but it cannot give ananda. It cannot mm. give ananda. Ananda is that pleasure which never can be taken away. It will not be taken away. It will not reduce. And it remains forever in all places, in all circumstances, in all times. Why? Because it is coming from within. Kya when we put the remote control of our happiness in things of this world, persons of this world, circumstances of this world, and when they all move with, mm. uh, you know, um, uh, instability in life, then what's mm. happening is when they come close to us, we are happy. When they are going away, we are distressful. It's like uh, reading something in a, in a local train or a local bus in Mumbai. Like, let's say we read something, a, a, a book <laughs> in, a, in a local bus or a, or a train. It's, it's moving and we are not comfortable. Mm. But the same mm. thing when, when we read a book on a flight, for five hours, we don't feel any, any nausea. We don't feel. Mm. So what I'm saying is when we focus our attention on something that moves, it mm. creates nausea. <laughs> but when we focus our attention on something that is steady, mm. it brings in happiness. So when we put our attention and affection and happy, happiness quotient on things, persons, and circumstances of this world, which are all moving, Ultimately, they will cr create nausea. <laughs> they will mm. create dissatisfaction when they are taken away. Mm. But when we focus our attention on something that doesn't change, that is God. Something that doesn't change, that is the soul. Something that doesn't change, that is the eternal relationship of the soul with God. Something that doesn't change is that of the loving call, that is the holy name. If we invest our happiness quotient in things that don't change, the prophet is inconceivable. But if we invest our happiness quotient in things which in a market which can crash, when we mm. make profit, it's great. But when it crashes, we are miserable. But if we mm. invest it in a business which will never crash and it just increases with time, then we're just going to make mm. more and more uh, you know, profit, spiritually speaking. So therefore, mm. this is called Sukha. This is called Ananda. So I wouldn't say that that you're miserable. You're definitely happy doing what you're doing. But mm. I just want to, with open arms, welcome you into the realm of unending happiness. Wow. Jeho, you heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here from Amarendra Prabhu's mouth itself, that there is a difference between Sukha, Sukham, and Ananda, right? So there's just, just tapping into the actual essence of it. But Ananda is something that will last, and it must Good. therefore come from a source that lasts. It must come from somewhere which will last if it, if you want it to last. 
In fact, one, the, in fact, even the etymology of the word sukha and dukha is very interesting. The word, mm -hmm. the syllable kha in Sanskrit refers to inner space. Mm. Inner space. Kham mm? buddhirevacha. Mm? So kham means ether, the inner space, the consciousness. Mm. So when that temporarily expands, it is called sukha. Kya baat hai? And when it temporarily contracts, it's called dukha. That consciousness mm. space has got contracted, then it expands, then it contracts, then it expands, then it contracts. So it's a temporary play of happiness and distress, which is flickering and fleeting. But ananda doesn't have a dukkha counterpart. <laughs> it's just increasing. Mm. <laughs> wow. That, that's very <laughs> profound. I really I've never heard this this uh, etymology of uh, dukkha and sukkha. So it, 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 I can even resonate while you were saying it you know how you feel down you that feeling of, of of as if you're being pressured into something this your your ether space is reducing being pressured stressed out causes dukkha and if it's mm -hmm. if you're feeling elated light open it's expanding you're gaining things materially then you feel sukha <laughs> wonderful wow. wow thank you for sharing that um it is coming up to two hours, so unfortunately, we're going to have to <laughs> call it now. But we were—we've had many, many questions which we can't, we didn't have a chance to get to. Uh, this simply means you'll have to come again, Amarendra Prabhuji. You're going to have to <laughs> promise us that you'll be back here. And so many people have mentioned, can you please do a bhajan for us? Because <laughs> apparently, you know, you're well known for your kirtans as well. So maybe on the next chat, we can have a, a nice. Uh, Kirtan with you. But for today, I'm sure we can all join together in thanking you for really enlightening us on this incredibly powerful topic. And I have heard this my whole life. You know, I, <laughs> I'm kind of, I've heard this. And yet I was riveted for two hours. So I can only thank your parents, your guru, gurus, and all of everyone who's empowered you to do this beautiful service of of, you know, and giving the heart ananda and sharing Krishna's message with everyone. So, you know, we, we shower you with all our blessings. <laughs> May you continue to, to make so many people connected with their true self. Thank you. Thank you so much. I actually <laughs> came here only for the blessings, but it's, uh, kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, unfair for me to just come and ask mm -hmm. for blessings without doing anything. So last two hours, uh, is a, is a humble offering only so that we can come to the actual point okay. of the discussion to ask uh, all of the, the viewers for blessings. I don't claim to be a, a, a realized person, a, a knowledgeable knower, <laughs> but I just want to say that all of the discussions will ultimately fructify, not on our endeavor, but by the blessings mm. of the natives. The practices <laughs> that we perform are like seeds but it needs mm. a fertile soil to fructify. And that fertile yeah. soil is the prayers, heartfelt best wishes and blessings of everyone, starting with you yourself first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anything we have is yours, Prabhuji. And everyone watching you, please, you know, let's, let's bless Prabhuji. Keep going. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so We're much. so grateful. Thank and everyone so else will join you again next Next, every Saturday, you know, we're here on YouTube and Facebook. And please do go and follow uh, Amarindra Das official on YouTube, on Facebook. And um, yeah, you can transform your life. <laughs> There's no excuse. Hare Krishna. Have a wonderful weekend.